build an astronomical telescope at home by hand. It can not only see the stars in the sky, but it's also said to be able to see the International Space Station. I originally wanted to buy a professional device, but the price clearly doesn't match my budget. Looking at its structure again, I didn't expect it to be so simple. But with my 30 years of single life hand speed, I can definitely make it by hand. Which of these two looks better? I think the one on the right is pretty good. Let's go with it. This is a Newtonian reflector telescope. It was invented by Newton in 1668 and provides a clearer view of celestial bodies than the original lens-based ones. Before making it, let's first understand its structure. Ignoring the auxiliary components for now, let's look directly at the main structure. It consists of a primary mirror, a secondary mirror, an eyepiece, along with a tube and a telescopic rod. It's simply too easy. The mirror is available on Taobao, and the tube can be made using PVC pipe. The magnification of the telescope is generally 2.5 times the diameter of the tube, and 500 times is sufficient for home use. Here, choose a 200mm PVC pipe, measure 57 centimeters, and mark it. Then use these two tools together to saw it off. Next, measure 15 centimeters and make a mark. Use the electric saw to cut along the line. Make a mark with the electric drill, 6.5 centimeters out. Drill a round hole at this point, and use the eyepiece base to position the screw holes. Next, drill holes in it for easier fixing later. Buy one can of black and one can of white spray paint from the hardware store. Apply the black paint to the interior to reduce internal reflection and scattered light, improving the telescope's image quality and contrast. Apply the white paint on the outside to make it more aesthetically pleasing. Buy three copper tubes from the hardware store. Cut them uniformly to 70 centimeters in length and use them as extension rods to ensure strength. Next, it's time to prepare the lens treatment. Unlike the Galileo telescope, which uses the convex lens refraction principle for imaging, the Newtonian telescope is a reflecting telescope that uses a concave mirror to reflect light for imaging. Those with strong hands-on skills can buy a piece of glass and grind their own lenses. However, the process is quite complex, requiring professional instruments to measure curvature. And finally, the mirror surface needs to be coated. Fortunately, with the all-purpose online marketplace, it only took 200 yuan to get a set. Look at this effect, it's just perfect. The primary mirror has a diameter of 160mm and a focal length of 1285mm. This is the reflector. It is oval-shaped. Next, cut the print the base and accessories for it. That's all the components. First, assemble the main mirror base, which consists of two triangular plates, and fix them together with screws. After assembling, there is some allowance, and its tilt angle can be adjusted by rotating the screws. The same principle applies to the secondary mirror base. Next, place matchsticks on the base, then apply hot melt glue to attach the main mirror. After it solidifies, remove the matchsticks. You can see there is some gap in the middle, which is because the thermal expansion coefficients of the mirror and the base material are different. This can reduce the impact of temperature changes on imaging, and also reduce the transmission of vibrations, thereby improving the stability of the imaging. Next, install the bracket on the tube. First, fix the printed part in place. Then insert the copper tubes and connect them together. The telescopic length of the tube is determined by the main mirror, which is the calculation method for the length of a refracting telescope, while the Newtonian reflector only needs to be half of that. The focal length of our primary mirror is 1,285 millimeters, which means the distance between the primary and secondary mirrors should exactly reach this value. Let's take a look at its appearance outdoors. It's not inferior to a purchase one at all. After extending, it can be locked here. The copper tube is also sturdy enough. Next, install the eyepiece base. Once the eyepiece is focused, just insert it upwards to secure it. The primary mirror needs to be more precise. Measure its distance, then attach the tube and drill holes. Finally, tighten it with self-tapping screws. The secondary mirror is installed at the top end. Make sure to align it with the eyepiece hole, so that the light reflects onto the eyepiece. Tighten the eyepiece, and the assembly is complete. Make a base for it using plywood, with the shape and dimensions like this. Now, let's have a full display. Not bad, save 2 watts. Install a finder scope here to quickly locate and lock onto the target celestial body. This is a laser emitter used to aim at the target celestial body. Here, different focal length eyepieces are provided. The magnification is the focal length of the primary mirror divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. Next, let's come to... It's an exciting part now. Before using it, let's first understand this principle. The light from the celestial body first enters the telescope's tube and shines on the primary mirror at the bottom of the tube. Since the primary mirror is concave, the surface mirror will parallel the light is focused onto the secondary mirror. Since it's a 45 degree inclined plane mirror, it can directly reflect light into the eyepiece. During this emerge, in then after magnification by the eyepiece, one can observe the image of the celestial body here. It should be noted that the image scene is inverted. Test it on a clear night. The moon on August 15th is indeed big and round. First, use the laser to aim at the target, then adjust the focus and tilt angle. Look, quite a cluster of stars. This looks like Venus. If anyone knows more, feel free to explain in the comments. I recognize this. Its ring structure is particularly distinct. This one goes without saying, 30 times magnification is still quite clear. Let's magnify it 100 times and see. You can see the craters. At 300 times magnification, it turns out there are no osmanthus trees up there.